done on submitting part one of your portfolio. I understand that this kind of task can be somewhat daunting for a lot of people. It's very different and in some cases challenging. But it's been really great to see that people have found real value to the exercise. You know, one of the most common statements I hear from students in this regard when they do this kind of assignment is, I've never thought critically about my online identity before. And that's somewhat concerning given that we've been developing one for well over a decade. But you've taken this opportunity and it's really good to see people putting a lot of effort in to critically and creatively unpacking what you do online. Keep this in mind as you go into the future of this unit. The issue is not going to go away. Please note that the results of this assignment will most likely be released at the end of the three week marking period that Deacon allows us. All markers in this unit are teaching multiple units and we have a very heavy workload, so I do appreciate your patience with this, but I guarantee that you will get feedback in time for the last assignment. And please don't think that you need to wait for feedback to start thinking, planning, and even putting some things into practice for part two of your portfolio. The two parts are very different. So there's no excuse for leaving it until the last minute. And please, please don't do that because you're making a video and the current video that I'm uploading to YouTube, which is 20 minutes long, I know it's a bit longer than what you'll be dealing with, it's got 800 minutes of uploading time to go. Tiffany and everyone else I ever film only goes up in HD. So, what am I talking about today? I'm not going to talk to you about the issue of online dating, sexting, pornography and all that kind of stuff. You've got heaps of resources, the study notes are there, really interesting readings to choose from. I've got an amazing conversation that is the one currently uploading with Natalie Hendry, a researcher who's looked into this area in lots of different ways. It's a fantastic conversation. Please do make sure you watch that or listen to the podcast version. Well, that's it from me in this video. If you'd like to keep watching, I'm going to use some footage from 2015, which actually uses some footage from 2014, which actually uses some footage from 2013. Ah, recyclability. Something that I found really interesting when this unit first ran in 2013, was that the me lecture for this topic, Sexing Up New Media, actually by the end of trimester had more views than even the welcome video, which seemed to attract all those people with a fetish for me screaming on a bungee bullet ride. And the possible or plausible reason why this me lecture would have had more views than any other is a curious one. I'm tempted to think it was my strange transformation of my living room into a supermarket, which seemed to mess with a lot of students' heads at the time, but I don't think that was it. And I'd like to think it was my classic prank on my brother. So the topics we're looking at this week are cybersex, online dating and pornography. And I remember one thing my brother said in year 11. We made a video for school and he told me what he thought about pornography. It's my favourite. Okay, that might have been taken slightly out of context. But I actually think it was because I listed cybersex, online dating, and perhaps most importantly, pornography, as search keywords on the video. I'm sure anyone who checked out the video for this reason was sorely disappointed, as my man Kenny was at dry cleaners that week. <laughs> but nonetheless, it is an interesting issue. Some footage I took recently in a class for a first year media studies unit reminded me of something we can easily forget. It gave me a perspective from the back of a lecture theatre that I haven't had for a number of years. Our reliance on screen media these days is astounding, and this only increases with every year. Whether it be for education, entertainment, online shopping, navigating our way around the city, or forming and sustaining relationships with people, digital media culture is an intrinsic part of our everyday lives. Is there a chance that anybody in this room could be updating their online dating site profile or sexting with their partner or perhaps even watching porn? Well, the question would have been absurd not so long ago, but the rise of digital media means that technically the answer is yes, it is possible, although perhaps somewhat unlikely in this context. When we talk about the issues we're dealing with this week, some of the most frequent phrases I hear are things like online sex and online dating. But as I've been asking in seminars, given the evident trend of these things becoming more and more naturalised as the years go by, will we actually say this in the future, or will it just be sex and dating? 
Anyone who is currently in a relationship is technically living, at least in part, and in some cases perhaps a large part, an online relationship. Although your instinct might not be to actually think this at first. Think about the amount of time you spend text messaging or sending Facebook messages or talking on Skype with a partner. In a sense, you are in an online relationship. Of course, this doesn't mean digital media will cause us just to get with anyone, as much as polemical current affairs media often makes it sound like this is the case. We always get to express our preferences. I hope you enjoyed that. While you were watching that, I just put together another intro sequence I'm still trying to work out for this video. What do you think about this?